Supreme. The story of Supreme is highly inspirational. They started as just a skate shop and is now one of the world's most luxurious retail companies. One that sells out their online merch in a matter of seconds, even with a pricey tag. Today, let's take a look at how this small town shop turned into a billion dollar global company that took the fashion world by storm. Supreme was founded in 1994 in Soho, Manhattan, in New York City, by a man named James Jabia. When James was a teenager in Crawley, West Sussex, in the 80s, he worked in a Duracell factory, often listening to T-Rex and Bowie on breaks. Spending his spare cash on trips to London just to buy clothes. What was so special about this store, you may ask? Well, it was one like no other, a certain elusive kind of store, one that inspired Supreme. By the time he was 19, James left England and worked as a sales assistant at a Soho store called Parachute. He was there until he eventually founded a store called Union, previously on Spring Street, but now in LA. He then went on to help run a shop with Stussy. It was there that James realized a new upcoming youth culture amongst the skateboarders, graffiti artists, and the street kids. They all had their own unique couture. At the time, hardly any companies paid attention to this crowd, giving James an opportunity. He saved up $12,000 to open a small skate shop named Supreme on Lafayette Street with one aim, to cater to this niche market. To start, he put out very basic products, Nothing too flashy. James only employed street skaters as sales staff. Since they were the target audience, they had the perfect understanding of the merchandise being sold. In fact, the Supreme brand even sponsored a team of professional skaters that originally had skateboards and actors Justin Pierce and Harold Hunter, who both starred in the 1995 cult right, classic right, right. film Kids, a film that both drew on skating culture and fashion of the mid-90s, while itself influencing both. James took full advantage, according to Vogue, when the first store opened. The initial employees were extras from the very movie. The store became a cool hangout spot for the skaters and really started to gain traction over a short period of time. The skaters would decide who could enter their stores, what merchandise needed to be in stock, and at what price. Soon, Supreme developed a strong connection with the underground society and slowly but steadily started growing. The crew behind Supreme at the time are all legends today, namely Eddie Cruz, Jason Dill, and Harold Hunter, just to name a few. Before Supreme blew up on social media, it was embraced by Tokyo. The street style there back in the 90s fell very close to what the brand provided. It was just a matter of time, but when the Tokyo market caught wind, the demand skyrocketed, giving James the perfect opportunity to open stores there as well. In the early 2000s, Supreme was tagged the cool kids store, anyone who was someone shopped there. James's hands-off approach and philosophy always keep the street kids in the driver's seat had really started to pay off. The love of skateboarding in New York really shaped the trends of the merchandise. Your stores were designed to look classy yet have their own spunk and attitude. Although today people see Supreme as a retail streetwear brand, at its heart, they are truly a skateboarding brand. This is a misconception that most people have without ever knowing the company's rich history. Along the way, Supreme's fashion world street cred has been bolstered by high-profile collaborations with the likes of luxury fashion house Louis Vuitton, but not excluding iconic global brands like Nike, Vans, and Levi's. The Louis Vuitton collaboration was, for many in fashion, the first glimpse into the secretive world of Supreme, defined by their authenticity, immediacy, speed, and deftness in their way of doing business. Whether Supreme is releasing a new line of its own apparel and accessories, or if James' company is dropping new items with yet another big name collaboration, it's become commonplace for Supreme fans, or better known as Supreme heads, to line up for hours on end outside just to get a taste, all forgetting the fact that within a matter of minutes, it's all sold out.
Supreme shoppers at release events will pay anywhere from $30 to $100 for a shirt or a hat and from $150 to over $450 for a jacket. The company has sold everything from Supreme branded hammers, nunchucks and kayaks to a Supreme brick, literally a red clay brick stamped with the Supreme logo. For such a huge brand, Supreme does not believe in marketing. Contrary to public opinion, they believe that their products speak for themselves and their customer base will increase due to word of mouth. Supreme has found a way to use the brand's own mystique to generate hype of such magnitude that the underground brand has gained an unbelievable global following. While James worries about overexposure, Supreme keeps advertising to a minimum and utilizes social media primarily as an exhibit platform. In fact, James states that we are not trying to overconnect ourselves. We are just trying to show people things that we do no different from what a magazine did 20 years ago. James mentions that any collaborations they do always have a certain meaning behind them. One of his personal favorite brands is Patagonia, along with a few other brands you may have heard of, like Antihero, a skateboard company. To James, they are very below the radar, but they are very pure in what they do. I hold them in as much esteem as I do Chanel or Vuitton. The Supreme brand is so sought after that the company faces a problem with copyright infringement stemming. Partially from the fact that Supreme was unable to trademark the brand until recently in 2012, all because the brand bore too many similarities to many other products and brands with the Supreme in the title. Supreme wasn't meant to be a brand. It's a good name, but it's a difficult one to trademark, James told Interview Magazine in 2009. Supreme also won a lawsuit in an Italian court in 2018 against a company called Supreme Italia, which sold what trademark lawyers called legal fake products that closely resemble Supreme's products, right down to the iconic red box logos with the word Supreme on it. The Italian company Supreme Italia was forced to withdraw from the Italian market. However, that didn't stop them from selling knockoff Supreme items in other countries, including Spain and China, according to the Wall Street Journal. The reason why Supreme stands strong today is that they stood for the so-called rebellious youth and gave them a home and voice. Now the company has support from millions of people across the planet. If it has a red rectangle with the word Supreme in bold white letters, it will sell. And that's how Supreme went from being a skate shop in New York that catered to skaters to a billion dollar company that has been shown off by celebrities like Kendall Jenner, Justin Bieber, Victoria Beckham, Kim Kardashian, ASAP Rocky, Travis Scott, Drake, and Rihanna. The list goes on, but unfortunately, this brings us to the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It does wonders for the YouTube algorithm, so more people can see our videos and so that you can be notified when we launch our next video. We try and put out at least one new one per week, and as you can imagine, the research and editing alone of these type of videos takes us close to 18 hours. So we would really appreciate it if you could also check out our Patreon. For just $1 a month, you can support our work. We produce over 12 videos per month, so that is literally 8 cents per video. Thank you so much and we'll see you at our next unmasking.